And now, the best 60-ish seconds of your week. Remember last week when Joe Biden told us that he would be in trouble if he answered additional questions from the media? Well, this week we found out why. Jen Psaki, you know, she's going to circle back to us all with a real answer, but she gave the truth for one, saying, we don't want Joe Biden answering the media's questions. Think about that for a couple of minutes and imagine what CNN or the New York Times or the Washington Post would have said about President Trump had his team said, oh, we're not going to chat with the American people. Now, this is a media that is friendly, to say the least, to Joe Biden and his administration, and they still want to hide him from the American people. They did it throughout the campaign, then they did it through the transition, using the pandemic and other things as an excuse. They've run out of those excuses now. So when will the American people have an opportunity to hear the truth? Well, don't bet on that for a while, but to at least hear from Joe Biden, unfiltered, answering questions from reporters, even from a friendly media. Undoubtedly, part of the reason that they don't want Joe Biden out there talking is he's got a lot of explaining to do because he was telling us throughout the campaign that he was an old-fashioned centrist Democrat, and yet the first hundred days of his administration have been the far left of the Democrat Party to the point where AOC says she's pleasantly surprised by how far to the left Joe Biden has actually gone. And this is the good part. This creates, in my judgment, a great opportunity for Republicans in 2022. As I look at it right now, I see Republicans picking up as many as 50 seats in the United States Congress and taking control of the Senate back, perhaps by a pretty significant margin, and picking up governorships around the country. The only thing is, we can't blow it. We have to have a defined message, reaching out to people who are not traditional Republicans in ways that they haven't heard before. If we're able to do that, 2022 looks very, very good for America. If we fail, well, we can't fail. Back in my home state, Tom Wolf, our Democrat governor, whom the national media said was the most liberal governor in the country. I mean, think about that one. It's a lot of competition for that title, and he managed to rise to the top as the most progressive governor in America. He now says that Pennsylvania can go back to work on May 31st or thereabouts. Wow. You know, it really is sad when you think about the fact that government shut down our economy with lockdowns, shutdowns, and all sorts of actions, particularly by Tom Wolf in Pennsylvania, that were at first simply arbitrary and capricious, but became punitive and vindictive and really hurt working families and their ability simply to feed themselves and to carry on their businesses. Now government says, we're the only solution to get you out of this mess. Well, voila. The fact of the matter is that opening up the economy is going to do great things for the American people and the hope and opportunities that come about from simply letting people do business are now coming back. You know, the stock market went up immediately after Tom Wolf's announcement. I'm only kidding. There was no correlation, but record highs for the market this week. And that's good for everybody because a rising tide truly does lift all boats. But what kills that kind of economic growth is bad economic policy. And that begins with things that cause the inflationary spiral, I think we're about to see, and taxation that cripples and stifles economic growth. Because as we've said many times here, if you tax something, you get less of it. And unfortunately, the Democrats constantly want to tax work, productivity, savings, investment, and you can go right on down the list. One important milestone to celebrate this week as Willie the Say Hey Kid Mays observes his 90th birthday. One of the greatest players of all time, if not the greatest player. You know, one of the surveys ranked him number two on the all-time list behind some guy by the name of Ruth. A 300 career hitter with 660 career home runs, putting him sixth on the all-time list. A Hall of Famer and Presidential Medal of Freedom recipient. What he really was greatest for was off the field. And so many of these people are better off the field than on. And for Willie Mays, that was really an accomplishment because his iconic catch in dead center field, that Vic Wirtz line drive, where he pivoted, fired it back into the infield, and actually held the runners on base, is perhaps the greatest play in baseball history. But Willie Mays said at the end of his career, I'm not a politician and I'm not going to make commentary on social policy or political issues. If we could only have that, 
from a few more of our athletes today. It truly would be the best 60 seconds of our week.